Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Kalik. Today I'd like to introduce you to splay trees. So splay trees are another kind of binary search tree. They're a little different from ABL trees in that they don't try to make everything always be log in. Insertion and deletion are going to be exactly the same as they are in our basic binary search trees. So no extra complications there. Our search time is still going to range from login to in. So not every single search will be as fast as it might be. But what we will do when we search, we're going to rearrange the tree using rotations similar to those we use with AVL trees when we insert and delete such that if we get a search that is big O of n, our rotations are going to improve the tree structure, making it shorter on the branch where we found the item. And our rearrangements are going to result in recently or very frequently accessed items clustering toward the top of the tree. Our structure changes are going to guarantee that if we do M searches, those M searches will take big O of M log N time as long as M is reasonably large. So if we just have an M, you know, if I do two searches, no guarantees. You know, any one search could be N time, but on average, it'll be log N. So to do this, we're going to be making changes to the search process. As I said, in search and deletion, just the same. With search, we're going to add an extra step. So first, you know, search for the item. It's going to work exactly the same as it does in any other binary search tree. But after we find it, we're then going to use rotations to get the item to be at the root of the tree. And we're going to do those rotations in a way that if the tree was out of balance, its balance will be improved. So let's start with just finding the 18. So we'll do that in the usual way. Now, once we found the 18, we see that it is one down from the root on the left. So to get the 18 to the root, we're going to rotate it to the right using a single rotation, just like any other single rotation, just like the single rotations that we use for AVL trees. Now we notice that after the rotation, 30 is going to need to be the child of the 18, but currently 18 has a right child. So the first thing we're gonna do is just set that right child aside to help with the rotation process. Then we're going to rotate everything and attach the 21 the left side of the 18, which is where it would belong after the rotation. So single rotations, just like AVL tree rotation. Let's try another example and go find the 28. Again, we're gonna go through the standard process of finding the item. Then we're going to come back out, generally unwinding recursion. We're going to see that the 28 is the right child of its parent, but its parent is the left child of the grandparent. So 28 is the right child of the 21. The 21 is the left child of the 30. So that means we need to do a zigzag or AVL double rotation. And we'll see why we refer to this as a zigzag rotation instead of just calling it a double rotation in a bit. So we're going to be moving the 28 up to the 30 and rotating down where the 30 is. We actually don't have any extra children involved here. So this is a fairly simple process. Now, of course, we're not all the way to the root yet. So we need to now do a single rotation to the left. So again, we'll pull the child out of the way do the rotation and attach the child to the 18. So 
now that we've seen this, let's look at the other situation that we might have. So, so far we've seen one rotation to get to the root, a single rotation. We've seen double rotation. And I want to look at what happens if we go searching for the 62. So you might think, well, we've got right, right, right. So we should just be doing single left rotation. However, single rotations aren't really going to help us with the structure of our tree. Let's see that. We do a rotation. We then rotate the 50 and the 62. We then rotate the 62 and the 30. And then we can rotate the 62 and the 28. This really hasn't improved the structure of our tree at all. And we said that we wanted, when things were a big O of N search, that we wanted to be improving the structure. And while we, this wasn't actually big O of N, because we had a bunch of things off to the left, we could imagine where we could have a tree that was just one long line, and certainly we would expect that to get better. So instead of single rotations, we're going to use a different kind of rotation, a zigzag double rotation, hence the zigzag. So zigzag, we're going in two different directions. Zigzag, we're going in just one direction. So we're going to just rotate the three items the opposite way. So our 30, 50, 58 become 58, 50 to the left, 30 to the left. So let's see what that does with the scenario we were just looking at. We found the 62, so now we do a zigzag rotation, and that hasn't really improved things in and of itself. But we'll see that if we continue to do these up the tree, we're actually getting some shortening of that path. No one set is going to fully improve the tree. And certainly we just took the largest thing in the tree to be its root. So however we do that, we're going to be a bit lopsided. But this will tend to make long rows of straight line tree branches into something shorter. So those are our three kinds of rotations. We have the single rotations, which we'll see only when we're at the very root of the tree the double rotations, which we'll see in the same kinds of circumstances that we used them in ABL that are the zigzag kind of rotation. And then whenever we have a grandparent that's in the same direction as the parent, we're going to use the zigzag rotation. So why do we care about these? They don't guarantee this lookup that is always log in. But they tend to work very, very well for problems with frequent repetitions, the same lookup. We call this locality of reference. So once we've referred to something, we're going to want to look it up over and over again, very likely. Examples where splay trees are used in the real world. Routing tables for networks, where we have many packets that are likely to come from one source to another destination. Most messages are not just one packet long, so we'll be looking up the same destination repeatedly. Memory caching and allocation, similar kinds of concepts. Garbage collection, data compression of certain kinds can make good use of these. And there are other examples, but what's true of all of these is that once we've looked up something, we're very likely to look it up again more than once. Thanks for watching. I hope this has given you a little bit of an idea of what splay trees are all about and how they might work. See you next time.